let us now talk about the reproductive system in female frogs and the process of fertilization. And the process of fertilization. We have already studied the male reproductive system and we have seen then in case of male frogs, the reproductive system and the urinary system, they are combined. And so we call it urinogenital system. Whereas in case of female frogs, there is a separate urinary system. That means the ureters open separately in the cloaca and separate reproductive system. So the oviducts will open separately. So that is what we are trying to see. The ovaries are placed over the kidneys, similar uh, location. So kidneys are these elongated bean-shaped structures. So this is the pair. The ovaries are ovoid and little irregular structures. And they are placed here, closer to the kidneys only. But there is no functional connection between the kidney and the ovary. So here we have to write that there is no important, no functional connection between ovaries and the kidneys. So there are separate membranes, whereas in case of males, the testes and the kidneys were sharing the common functioning uh, connection. So this is one. Let us draw one more here. Irregular little ovoid. And from the ovaries, the eggs are collected by the ducts. So here the duct is going to have a funnel-like opening. Here also there is a funnel-like opening. And then there is a narrow tube. This is the OV duct comparable to the fallopian tube and from here also there is this OV duct again comparable to the fallopian tube. Now let us draw the cloaca. Cloaca we know is a common opening for three systems. So this is the cloacal chamber. Cloacal chamber is going to receive the ureters from the kidneys so this is the pair of ureters which are going to open into this. So separate ureter opening. And these tubes, here there is a little swelling which can be compared with the uterus part. And it opens here. Here also there is a swelling which is compared with the ureter part and the opening. So this is the OV duct. And this is the OV sac or we can compare it with the uterus. That means these are the ovaries. This is one and this is one paired structures. These are the sac like structures which are going to collect the eggs and then the eggs are brought into the cloaca. And these, this is the kidney and this is the ureter. That means in case of female frogs, the ureters open separately into cloaca and the OV ducts also open separately into the cloaca. And this structure is, so cloaca has received separate things from three systems. Gonads, in case of female reproductive system, the eggs from here, urine from here and this is the rectum part. So, digestive system, urinary system and the reproductive system, they open into this sac-like structure that is cloaca. In case of uh, the female frogs, when we are talking about the reproduction, the breeding season is rainy. Rainy season is the breeding season because during summers and winters, the frogs go into that uh, winter sleep and the summer sleep, hibernation and astivation. During breeding season, 
when they have to reproduce, then copulation has to take place because the sexes are separate. Now, how the fertilization will take place? The female frogs lay around, would lay around 2000 to 2500 eggs per time. Every time they lay eggs, the number is around 2500 plus minus. The eggs are released in water. And they are released in a jelly-like material so that all the eggs are placed together. During copulation, the male frogs hold the female frogs. This is the process is known as copulation. And the purpose is that as soon as the eggs are released, the sperms need to be released on the eggs. Because this jelly, after some time, it is going to become little semi-solid type. And then the sperms will not be able to move in this jelly-like material. So as soon as the eggs are released, the sperms should also be released. So when we talked about the morphology of frogs, we said the males and the female frogs can be differentiated. One difference was that the male frogs have a copulatory pad on their first digit of the forelimb and with that pad it holds the female and as soon as the female starts releasing the egg the male frog starts to release the sperms on the egg and fertilization takes place that means fertilization is external it takes place in water. After fertilization, so that jelly-like uh, material is, it's going to look like this, irregular mass. And here the eggs were released and then the sperms were released. And now these are the zygotes. From the zygote, Hatches, zygote, hatches the larva and the larva is known as tadpole. The larva of frog is called tadpole. Tadpoles are aquatic. They are released in water. So, they are aquatic. If they are in water, they have to have the respiratory structure which can help them absorb the water, oxygen which is dissolved in water. So, they have gills for respiration. Because they are in water, they can afford to eliminate their nitrogenous waste in the form of ammonia. So, they are ammonotelic. Remember, the adult frogs are ureotelic because they have to live on land also and whether ammonia is released or urea is released depends on the availability of water. Because they are aquatic, water is not a problem for them. So, they are aquatic, so they can afford to eliminate ammonia. So, they become ammonotelic. They have gills for respiration and tadpoles have a tail. So, from these structures, when metamorphosis takes place, and the tadpole changes into the adult frogs, there are certain changes which are going to take place. Like from aquatic habitat, they become amphibious. That means they can live on land as well as in water. Gills are lost and the respiratory structures become like a pair of lungs. Then skin and the buccopharyngeal cavity. From ammonotelism, now they shift to ureotelism and the tail is lost. So, tadpole undergoes metamorphosis and a metamorphosis in which a well-developed functional structure is lost is known as retrogressive. Retrogressive metamorphosis and tail is lost. So, after this retrogressive metamorphosis, we get the adult 
frog and other frogs do not have tail so a very well func developed functional structure tail is lost such kind of a metamorphosis is retrogressive metamorphosis this is a very 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 important word so fertilization is external it is in water and remember the egg and the sperms they need to be released at the same time the reason is this jelly like material one reproduction the fertilization is outside the body the eggs and the sperms have to remain together and the sperm should be able to swim up to the egg. So the best idea is as soon as the egg is released, on top of it, the sperm should be released. Fertilization takes place and this jelly-like material remains together. So all the zygotes remain in that uh, jelly-like material. Development takes place, tadpole comes out of the egg. Tadpoles, very unique features. They are aquatic, gills for respiration, ammonotelism and they have a functional tail and when metamorphosis takes place we have seen the morphology of adult frogs their body is divisible into only head and trunk the body becomes streamlined and the reason is they have to swim through water and that is by streamlined body so female reproductive system totally different from what we saw in case of male frogs separate urinary system and separate reproductive systems opening into cloaca and the fertilization process.